In the previous video, which was a relative introduction to this forward stride, I was talking about the problem issue, it's a very common issue, of this heel of the advancing foot coming in contact with the floor and having too much pressure put on it. And that deserves uh, a bit more discussion. The big issue is it's a transfer of body weight problem, and it's because you're not continuing to support yourself on this pushing foot enough. And when this heel comes down, you're immediately pushing pressure into that heel for support when that is not ready to be used for support. The heel right here is not meant to be used for support because that needs to be a passive pressure to allow the body to keep moving forward onto that foot, allowing that foot to flatten out as the stride continues. So it's a transfer of weight. It's a support issue from that pushing foot not being able to continue to hold that pressure there, whether that be a stiffening problem or a strength problem. The result is the same. This heel pressure pushing the body back. Now, what allows that pressure to come back up from the body? Remember, every force has an equal and opposite force. So when this heel is coming in contact with a lot of pressure, a lot of body weight on it, it's pushing down into the floor and forward, which is pushing the body backward. But what is allowing that to happen? In other words, you know, when people are walking, we'll say people with natural ability, sometimes they're walking with heel heavy uh, footsteps, and we've all heard that. Some people do that, and they're doing just fine, other than you can hear them coming down the hall without seeing them because their foot is pounding so heavily on the floor, and that's a heel coming down because they're, they're back here with their shoulders. Got a lazy way of walking. But with that increased heel pressure, they're not pushing themselves backwards. So why is it when people with these restricted postures, why are they pushing themselves backwards? Well, there are a couple of reasons for that, but first let me cover the knee issue. That person with natural ability, when they're walking even back here, this knee is still flexing, even slightly. But you take that person with the movement impairment, restricted posture, typically that knee is not. Typically that knee is straight, and typically that knee is stiffened. So the difference between the two is, the person with that knee that is flexing even just a little bit, when that pressure is coming back up from that heel, it doesn't enter into the body because that flexing knee is like a shock absorber and it dissipates that force coming back up. Well, you take the person with the problem and you're doing this, that straight knee allows that force to come right back up and right through the body. So this happens instead of this. And the difference is the flexing knee or the non-flexing knee. So this is the joint that you really, really, really need to work on because the hips routinely are, are flexing even though they're somewhat limited, but they're easier to get to work correctly than the knees are. What can we do to help that issue? Well, 
look back to what we've already covered way back in the second and third stance about all this work and exercise and games and whatever that you use to try to get these knees to do exactly that and stay that way when you're doing the forward stride. Remember, it's more difficult to do it in the forward stride because we're going forward. We're using that different axis of the foot, the long axis. The foot needs to be flexing a little bit more. We need to be more confident and more relaxed in our posture than we ever had to do for all the first four stances that we did and everything we did. So how can we help that even further? Well, the other problem that goes along with that is this support and pushing problem. Well, the support problem is a strength issue, and you need to work on strengthening these legs strengthening total body, better tone, better ability to allow you to handle, handle that situation better. For example, if you're weak, you're not going to be transferring this pressure onto one foot to stabilize yourself to then move on to this other foot. It's just not going to happen. You're not strong enough to do that. So you're going to be staying on this inside pressure, and this inside pressure, as you're starting to come forward, it's pushing you right back down to the floor. Same thing that was here in this side stride, using the inside pressure, the same thing applies moving forward. The other part of that is a confidence level as well, or a confidence concern, because you need to be able to transfer that body weight over here pretty much to the center of the foot to be able to confidently take that stride forward and especially to have that stride come in more narrow to a more natural stride pattern. So there again it's working on standing on this one foot to feel that one that pressure where it needs to be to be able to be confident that that foot is going to support me and I'm okay and then it's also doing these heel lifts and have the ability to do those out here in the middle of the floor without being concerned that oh my god I'm going to fall. So all of those things we've covered in those first in those first four stances everything is what you need to be to be able to not have this knee straighten up. Okay, we've talked about the strength, we've talked about transfer of body weight issue. What else is there with that? Shoulders. I mentioned earlier in a different video, the two biggest problems that we're gonna plague you with your movement. The number one biggest problem, forever and ever, knees, not wanting to flex, not wanting to stay flex, not wanting to move far enough down. The other, second biggest problem, shoulders coming back, not wanting to come forward or stay far enough forward to allow all this stuff to work. And when the shoulders are back, it tends to pull the knees straighter in those with those people that have this restricted posture movement permit. So, this problem of coming onto the heel is also related to the big problem we have of starting and stopping the forward stride. It's going to be a big issue with many of you. Well, it already is a big issue with many of you, just as it was for me. And you will see this with people if you just watch them. The biggest problem. Where they're going to have the most accidents is when they're starting the movement and when they're start stopping the movement. Because too often starting the movement to transfer this body weight, you bring the shoulders back and here you are back, you're pushing yourself back. Even when you become a little more adept at this, you're going to be here. And then when you transfer this body weight, you can be even right here, right here. And when you transfer this body weight, 
of many of you, many of you with a mild, moderate problem are going to do this. You be in this ready stance, you'll have pressure towards the ball areas of your feet, and as you transfer that pressure over here to this one foot, you will start to fade back with your shoulders without even recognizing that you're doing it. And that's because of all the issues we've talked about, the strength issue, the confidence issue, and the big fear issue of having the pressure out there in the forward part of your foot, which is subconsciously still in here that says, no, 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 we don't do that because we're going to fall forward if you do that. And it's doing that with the increasing pressure coming down on that one foot to allow you to stand on that one foot to be able to support yourself moving through that stride, which is going off in here saying, no, 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 no. So to help you with all of those things, you're doing this without even recognizing it. So you're here ready to take the stride. You're set up, and naturally it should be boom. As soon as you transfer the body weight onto this foot, holding that pressure right there in the ball of the foot, you move forward. As soon as this, this comes up, you're moving forward. But as you're dealing with all these different problems, when you're here and you transfer the body weight, this happens, you typically start backwards in your stride. Or you just don't go anywhere. So then what do you do to help that problem? <laughs> Upper body. You're back here. You have no recourse. And you come forward with you with your shoulders instead of Stopping it. Ah, I went back. You recognize the problem. And you start again to get this. You have to, again, exaggerate this stuff. Exaggerate staying down to exaggerate that pressure to get everything down, to keep that knee down, to stop putting increased pressure in that heel prematurely by an incomplete transfer of weight and shoulders coming back up more reasons why this is more difficult. Transfer body weight onto the ball area of the foot you're using to support yourself with and push yourself forward and keep this knee flexed. Even if you are doing it standing upright, if you have that ability and you're doing this, well, okay, yes, during that transition, our knee does straighten. But when it's out here, even if that knee is straight, it's not locked in place with those people with natural ability. If they have too much pressure there, they can easily flex that knee and keep on going. And many times they do. We all make mistakes. But the person with these restrictive posture movement permits don't correct that. They can't correct that because they're stuck here. That's stiff. This is stiff. This is stiffening up. They're falling back. They're locked up and they can't correct it because the body is unable to correct it. So you have to practice all of those things, all those different games, all kinds of whatever you want to make up and do to become used to being here, to be able to hold this for that pressure to push you forward. And the big thing is you have to be practicing these. You have to be practicing these heel lifts. And on one foot, you have to have the ability to do them on one foot. And I advised you before to have the ability, work up to the ability to do that on both feet or just one foot 25 times each way, 25 times on each leg, each foot. If you can do that 25 times without stopping, you have the strength to do this 
the ability to do that comes with trusting that weight transfer and trusting that push forward from the ball area and toes of that foot. It's a big mishmash that comes in that you're trying to overcome. And these, keeping them forward, to keep these flexed down, that's a trick. It's going to take you a while. And even after you become confident with doing that, some days you're going to screw it up. Some days you have an off day or you'll be doing something different or you'll be a little bit tired doing something that's familiar and or whatever, and you're going to have that same problem. You're going to make the mistakes. It'll happen in a heartbeat. That's okay. Recover, stop, realize what you did, correct your mistake, and move on. Now, a big thing here is this pushing from the ball and toes area of your feet and keeping down with the knees. Go back to the fourth stance, staying down, and here we, we have the inside pressure again as you did before, and just feel that again. Feel how much push you need into the toe ball area of that foot. Oh, yeah, I need my shoulders forward. There it is. That's better. Play with it. Well, what if I have my shoulders back? Oh, push it right back really quick. And I'm standing here heavy on my heels. It takes more effort to lift that heel because there's more pressure on it. So you need to come forward, relax like you're dribbling the ball and dropping the ball and doing whatever other game you want to play. And now there's just a small amount of pressure here that's required. And the heel left push me over here and become comfortable with that. Change this. Feel this, how I go from one foot to the other and stay stable. How do I get this knee to lift this foot off the floor easily? The operative word there is easily. How, what, what's the mechanism that allows this knee to lift that foot easily? We were sitting on the chair demonstrating this way back in a sitting video. It's the complete transfer of body weight, which is exactly what you need to be able to do this forward stride better. It's the same thing you need for this side stride, although it's so very easy to cheat, to have the inside pressure working for you, because remember, you're coming on to this total length of the foot over here. It's very supportive. So you can get away with this inside pressure and feel like, oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Well, yes, you are, but not as well as you think you are when you're trying to transfer all this pressure to one foot to be able to do this, and then transfer it over here to be able to do this. Very controlled and very smoothly. I'm not sure how smooth that was there on the camera, but it felt pretty good. And that's the trick. But what you're trying to get away from is this. This only comes part way or you're you're falling back onto that foot prematurely because inside you can get away with that. Forward, uh-uh. You don't get away with this much. You have to be better. You have to be more efficient with the transfer of body weight. Stabilization, lifting that knee to get that foot off the floor and keep it off the floor so the knee can deliver it to where it needs to go. If the transfer of weight isn't complete,
that foot will not go where the body thinks it's going to be going or where the body has set it up to go. Remember, it's your posture that adjusts that pressure in your feet. Where that pressure is located in your feet, that determines where this foot's going to come down. It's not your thinking brain unless you're doing something special where you must step with that correctly. But when you're taking a stride, it's not stepping. Remember, it's not this. We're not doing this. Stepping is you're leaving your body weight behind on this supporting foot and advancing the other foot to place it where you want. And then you move the body weight onto it. But in a natural stride, we do just the opposite. We advance our body with the foot because it's our body that's delivering that foot. The knee is controlling, it's fine tuning where that foot is going to go. It controls it. But the body, according to this push, delivers it and the knee is lifting it off the floor and putting it right there on the floor where the body requires it to be for support and to continue the movement. This is why it's a thoughtless movement. Set the pressure, boom. The foot is there because the body says, this is where I need it. So all of those things I've talked about here, that's why it's more critical for you to get a better handle on those so you can allow yourself to just let it go, to stop thinking about it because you've done your work and uh, that foot is right there. Wherever the pressure is, when you have a relaxed, dynamically relaxed, coordinated, controlled posture, doesn't matter how big the stride is or how whoop, or how a small stride is, that advancing foot will be exactly where the body needs it, without question. It's only not where it's supposed to be when we interfere with it from thinking or because we have this restricted posture that doesn't allow it to go where it needs to go. Now, back to this pushing issue. Here's the wall. Now let me start it with this side movement first. It's, we've done this before, way back in another video, where we're judging ourselves here against the wall. And we are relaxing our knees to get this push down, to get this posture going where it needs to go, feeling this pressure transfer into the other foot, blah, 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 all the stuff we covered before. Now, we're going to do that going forward. Now, I'm going to set it up this way. This front foot, the advanced foot, is about one foot length away from the wall. And this foot here, you can have it angled out to the side a little bit if you want, like at a 35, 45 degree angle for better support. I don't care. Or you can have it straight on. If you have better ability, doesn't matter. This foot is going to be flat on the floor and stay flat on the floor. This foot back here is going to be pushing you forward and then back. So what's the difference between doing this sideways and doing it facing the wall? The answer is nothing, except the orientation of your feet. That's it. Doing it here, it's just a little more challenging because if this knee is straight and you push, it's very easy to push you forward into the wall. If you're standing back here, and have a lot of heel pressure and this knee is straight like like I'm showing here and you come forward it's very easy to push yourself 
up and forward into the wall. As this push continues, you're coming over that straight knee. Pressure increases in the knee backwards, it locks, and your body just tips forward. So this is controlling this movement with the push, controlling the movement with the knee, with the entire flexing body and hips. This knee moves forward with that push, and where do you want it to be? Where do you want it to be? And I just fell out of that a little bit there because I got preoccupied, but what physically happened? Well, let me show you. I was here, and I was coming forward and talking, and I allowed that pressure to go into the ball area of that foot and toes, and this knee wasn't flexing as much as it should have. And see how that heel's coming up? And then I'm shipping forward off the front of my advancing foot. To help you with this knee problem, with the pushing problem, keeping this foot, advancing foot flat as you do it, use the wall. And one thing I do with the people I work with is, I have them put their hand up here. And not to do this with the hand, it's to have the hand there to use as a guide. And also, if you tip and go forward, it's there to help you. Now put your nose on the wall. So this needs to be relaxed. Everything relaxed. And then this push coming forward, where do you want to stop? On that flat foot, on the forward flat foot. And you want to push this knee forward. Oh, see, I did it again. This time I pushed the knee forward a little bit too far. So, allow this knee to go forward, but the shoulders need to come down with it. Whoop, a little bit of stiffness there, going to happen. No big deal, okay, let it go, let it go, let it go. I'm working on just pushing the knee now, and there I am, flat foot, shoulders and knee lined up. So, Two ways to do this. One is, just like I just did, not pushing back here, but coming forward with just your knee. Pushing your knee down and forward, and just letting your body come with it. The other way is lifting the heel, pushing from the back foot to push your body forward, and still lining everything up. You have to play with that movement of knee coming forward and shoulders coming down to feel this to help you with that forward movement when you're doing it on your out here in the middle of the room to come down and do the exact same thing to help you stay off that heel so that, that pressure doesn't increase and to also help you Keep advancing forward, keeping that push going, and to also help you get on this flattened foot quicker so you have it for support because many of you are going to need it. The longer you take to transition, the more unstable you're going to be because now you're depending on all of this back here to support you, and but you're going to be pushing into that heel quicker because of all the issues we've talked about and cause you problems. So you, you don't want to do this as quick as you can. You just want to be able to do it more smoothly. And notice how I'm coming forward. I'm coming down with that knee. It just takes time. It takes some effort. 
lot of dedicated time. And you saw I made some mistakes. No big deal. And when I first started out, I was unsteady and there were some body shakes there just mildly, but that was me inducing that from just not having it set up correctly. It's going to happen. We have more to cover on this fifth stance, this forward stride. Gaining control of the knee and the shoulders is the key. I wish I could say that I'm all over that, but it still happens on occasion when I forget when I do something stupid, and that's what I refer to my mistakes as, I did something stupid. Learn from them, correct them, move on, don't get waked out by them, and things will gradually improve for you. Your movements will get better, but give it time. And a lot of